100 players who shook the cup. Shook the cup. Well, Albert Stubbins, uh, now he's one of the great, great names in post-war Liverpool. He was a record signing uh, in 1946, 12,500 quid, which, believe you me, was a lot of money in 1946. He was playing for Newcastle, uh, was a prolific scorer during the Second World War, and both Liverpool and Everton wanted to sign him. It actually caused uh, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a shock waves through football, you know, that Liverpool were, were splashing out this kind of money. They had to, though. Uh, he was very, very good, and Everton were also extremely interested. Liverpool headed off up to uh, Newcastle and opened negotiations for him, and Everton got wind that they'd gone up, and they followed, and they were about two hours behind Liverpool. Albert, at this stage, was in the news theatre in Newcastle at the cinema, and the two clubs were there at St James's Park, both agreed to fee 12,500, no problem with the fee, and a, a message came up on the screen, would Albert Stubbins please report to St James's Park? So off he goes from the news theatre to St James's to find Everton and Liverpool waiting to speak to him. Apparently, he flipped a coin. Tossed up, which he'd speak to first, and happened to be Liverpool, and um, he, um, he agreed to sign for them. He said, OK, I won't even... So he just told Everton, look, I've agreed to go to Liverpool. I might be making a mistake, I don't know, but I like what they've done the way they've spoken to me. Do you mind? They said no. Um, the Liverpool, uh, Everton accepted it, disappointed though they were. And at the time, it was a British record fee. He was brought in, though, to try and stiffen up the side. It was felt that we needed that little bit extra up front. Um, Billy Little was doing a great job for us, but we needed something extra, uh, and it paid off. He come from Geordie Land, and uh, he worked hard all the time on the pitch, but uh, it was a bit of a different type of game them days. But he had loads of skill, good in the air, and he wasn't selfish. He played the ball around and that. What a fantastic player he proved for Liverpool because he was the spearhead of the 46-47 championship side. He was good, Albert. He, he, got, he played one cup final, I think, when he got beat by Arsenal. Two and all, I think it was. I think it was 1950, it was. Final result was 5-1 in the visitors' favour. So to a victorious team, we say, good for you, Liverpool. During his time with the club, though, he scored the most amazing goals at times. Some of them are incredible. Um, he scored a number, or, or attempted a number of flying headers, you know, when you're sort of parallel to the ground. And he's famous, amongst other things, for a goal when he was six to nine inches off the ground in a cup tie on a frozen pitch against Birmingham to meet a little cross to head in one of the great goals of his great of his many goals, uh, uh, one of the greatest in his career. Stubbins gets his second and Liverpool's third. And people who saw it used to talk about it, and still do those who saw it, this amazing goal. He lacerated his knees in a terrible way because there was ice on the pitch. They wouldn't, they wouldn't play the game now because the pitch was dangerous, but they did then. And he scored this fantastic goal on that pitch. There were contract problems though with him. Again, you know, he was a big name and it's perhaps hard to kind of think back into those days. But I mean, he, he deserved, you know, he could command a decent wage. I think it was 53, there was a period of time when his contract negotiations stalled and the club weren't really too sure. Um, and the fans were really upset about this because obviously, as far as they're concerned, you just you pay him what he, what he wants. Don't argue about it. Liverpool clinched their right to play in the semi-finals for the first time since 1914 when Stubbins did it again. Uh, when he finally did resolve it, though, he played in, a, in a, a little charity game or a testimonial game. I can't remember. That. It might have been a friendly or something. And over 20,000 people came just because they wanted to see Albert Stubbins back. But he also has another really interesting claim to fame. The only footballer on the um, Beatles album Sgt Pepper in the montage on the uh, album cover, Albert's in there. He got a phone call from the Apple organization saying um, Paul McCartney uh, would like him to go on the, um, on the sleeve of the LP and he thought it was a wind-up. Um, and uh, apparently Paul McCartney was a massive fan of Albert Stubbins as a player. Now I asked um, Paul McCartney why did you choose Albert Stubbins and they just said it's, you know, 
you know, we, 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 we followed Liverpool, we followed Everton for that matter, but you know, we followed Liverpool in particular, we remember them, but it's just a Beatle name. And, and, and in Paul's own words, he says, it's such a John name, Albert Stubbins. You know, it just sounded right, you know. But also partially because they knew he'd made this huge impact. I mean, you know, you, know, you have to remember, as kids growing up in Liverpool, they would have known all about this guy. It's now become an iconic cover, that may be the most famous album cover ever made. I mean, sadly, Albert Stubbins is no longer with us. And uh, I know that in his very, very last interview that he gave, for the club, in fact, the only thing he had, the football memorabilia in his house, was actually a little plate uh, of the Sgt Pepper album cover as a little memento. So that obviously really meant something to him, that he'd made it up there with the Beatles. So that was Albert Stubbins, the Berlin Stub.